Welcome to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast, hosted by Craig Phillips and Jeff Torrey. Visit us at FantasyFootballProfit.com. And now your hosts, Craig and Jeff. Welcome everyone to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast. I'm Craig Phillips, joined as always by Jeff Torrey, and we're here again Sunday night. We're going to recap the Week 2 Sunday action. It's what, 11.05 p.m.? Looks like the Giants and Cowboys are just almost going to wrap it up. Eh, both offenses don't look great. Giants are kind of a disappointment, but overall today, Jeff, week two Sunday, what's your biggest takeaway you think you had today? Well, I thought we learned quite a bit. Um, really, there was a, a few different players that we're still kind of searching for. Uh, people like, you know, Sammy Watkins, Amari Cooper, like, what is that, you know, what is going to happen with them? And I, I think we learned a lot today about people that we can start looking into trusting and then people we have to start moving away from. So I, I think um, it wasn't one huge thing for me, but you're starting to get a real clear picture of who's who in this league now. And some people might have overreacted a little bit too much last week to maybe star players not do anything like Travis Kelsey. He came back. It just shows you don't overreact to week one too much. But it's when it turns into two weeks worth of stuff, you might need to react a little bit, which is probably what we're going to be doing with Patrick Mahomes. Two weeks in, the guy looks legit. I mean, no, no, well, that, that whole Kansas City offense looks great because I, I, mean, I didn't expect Mahomes to be this good. I, I didn't know what to expect from him, but he is he's he's the real deal. He looks to be. Uh, I'm I'm almost afraid to uh, anoint him quite yet because two weeks is a very short window in order to do that. I mean, not to mention, yes, he looks absolutely the part. Ten touchdowns in two weeks. But as you saw, Ryan Fitzpatrick has been around for a long time. And, you know, he looks phenomenal too. 800 yards and eight touchdowns in the last two weeks. So, yes, I think Mahomes is for real. But, um, <laughs> I, you know, I want to had these expectations be realistic because everyone on that team is going absolutely crazy right now. So we have to, I think we have to step back and figure out, you know, who is actually going to keep going at this rate and who is going to kind of take a step back or when they, when they do cool off just a bit. I mean, I guess Kareem Hunt was able to get that receiving touchdown today as everyone else did too. He is the only one who hadn't been doing too much, but that helps. Sammy Watkins looked good. Travis Kelsey looked great. Tyreek Hill looked great. I mean, it's just that it's going to slow down, obviously. Otherwise, Mahomes is going to have the greatest season of all time. So it will slow down. Yeah, it has to. And is there anyone on this team that you're, you believe in a little more than everyone? Cause as you, as you said, every single person got their time in the sun today. I mean, it, it was incredible. I mean, was it four different receivers catching a touchdown? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, five, <laughs> five different people. Um, and Hunt still getting 18 rushing attempts on top of that. So, I mean, every single person, you know, got a large amount of work. So everyone looked good. But who do you actually believe in on this team? Or or do you just throw a blanket over the whole thing and say, I, I hope I have them all? I mean, I believe in Kelsey. I believe in Hill for sure. So those two, 100% I believe in. And I'm pretty decently confident in Hunt. He's going to be good. He might not be what he showed at times last year, but he's going to be at the absolute worst solid Top end RB2, back end RB1. He'll be fine for you. Those three for sure. Sammy Watkins, I want to say this is what he can do every week. I, I mean, but I've been burned before, so I don't, I'm not ready to say it yet. I'm not ready. Sammy Watkins has always been my guy, but six for 100 is great. But ugh, I don't know. Are you ready yet? I'm not ready yet, but for what he did show today, it makes me very optimistic I'll say that uh, especially he was far more involved in the offense than even Hill was for a large part of that day um, I think I don't know whether they really tried to get him the ball or it was just worked out that way because they were focusing so much on Hill but he went to him often and you know it wasn't just deep plays like uh, kind of happened in you know with the Rams it wasn't like you know, in space by any means. He was he was running, he was finding him when he was, you know, getting open. So Watkins looked really, really good. I'm, I'm very optimistic. I, and once again, it's not like you're going to get him for a discount because people drafted him and, you know, and because they believed in him. So this is kind of paying them back for that belief. But I, I do think that he is going to be relatively consistent. I think he can be that player. Well, well, Hill can be more of the home run player, even though, I, you know, they're probably still going to target Hill 10 times because why wouldn't you? Yeah, I mean, 
you're going to. But and nice to see Sammy get the end around too that he turned into 31 yards. They just they want to get they know they got a talented guy want to give him the ball. So it's good to see. We'll see how it continues. The team say they played against the Steelers. Steelers, we knew it was going to be a shootout. I we had Big Ben what second and third ranked this week in our rankings. You just could tell this is what that game was going to be. There's really not much to read into it for the Steelers. It's just this is this is a home game for the Steelers where they usually put up big points, at least offensively. They couldn't stop Kansas City, but they scored points. They don't need Bell to do it. Connor did nothing on the ground, but he was able to get a touchdown. He got a few receiving yards, but Smith Schuster looked great again, I'll say. Mm-hmm. I mean, just ridiculous how good he is right now. Yeah, and that, that, I mean, it's crazy. They have two number one wide receivers. Obviously, Antonio Brown is the man. He, you know, he, he's just amazing. But Sh- Smith Schuster keeps showing up, and you, you see it with not only his receptions, but his targets as well. Uh, you know, Roethlisberger really believes in this guy, and he just, I mean, he is so young still, and I can't believe how good he looks out there and how smart of a player he is uh, being so young. And Jesse James pulled in five for 138 and a touchdown as well. Antonio Brown only nine for 67. Surprisingly, in a game like this, Brown didn't do much. But, hey, this is the worst you're going to get from Brown. So even PPR-wise, they'll sell the nine catches, so he's fine. Just overall, that's just a shootout, though. Not much there. But how about you mentioned Fitzpatrick earlier. What you, is James Winston going to get his job back? You know, that's a very good question. Uh, if they keep going like this, uh, why would he? I mean, to be to be quite honest, uh, Fitzpatrick is playing out of his mind right now. I, I don't expect him to always throw four touchdowns. But, I mean, you know, if, if they're winning, why in the world would you take him out? And Deshaun Jackson, another big touchdown. It's still that boomer busting. You don't know if you can count on it, but another four for 129, a touchdown. It's... I mean, I can see him being a flex in people's lineups next week. I'm, we, I think we have to move him up in the ranks. Yeah, we we do. I'm still so hesitant on him though. I, he has looked really, really good, but I, I've been burnt by him so many times that I just, you know, I, I can't imagine using him over. I don't know. I mean, I even like Godwin more than him. Like, I know they're on the same team, and Jackson has outperformed him. But I, I just think that there will come a time when Godwin gets more targets and Jackson kind of, you know, turns back into his, his old self, which is a very dangerous fantasy player to have. Or Jackson heard all the rumors that Godwin's overtaken him, and now this is what he is. He's going he's gonna to put up a big year one last time. I don't know. Could I have him on one of my teams, and I think I might be putting him in my lineup next week. And if he keeps playing like this, I mean, you have to. But he'll I go just, two for just, 11 next week. Exactly. It will come a time when he definitely does that. But nice to see O.J. Howard, too. Yes, finally. I was going to say, I've been hyping this guy up, and I was really afraid I was going to be wrong. I I don't know how it's going to play out the rest of the year, but I I expect big things from him. And I think this is just the first game of many where you're going to see him starting to increase his targets and increase his, you know, just he's such a a freak athlete and he's such a dangerous guy when he's out on the uh, field. So three for 96 on a touchdown. I know one was, you know, one big play, but I think that they'll start working him in more and more because he's so dangerous in the middle of the field, stretching it. I mean, he's a mismatched nightmare. You know, they, they really might have to take a look at Ronald Jones next week. Might have to make him active. Barber's really not going to get it done. I don't think, I think we knew this is what Peyton Barber was 16 carries, 22 yards. He hasn't really he's he's just he's a very average guy. And I know there's something going on with Ronald Jones where I think it's more of a trying to get the guy to wake up a little bit, but maybe they gotta see what they got in him because it can't be worse than Peyton Barber. So No, I mean unfortunately I, I agree with you. I, yeah, it's ruined for the guy, but they, they can't rush the ball at all. But you know, they, they couldn't rush the ball last year either. And as long as they keep throwing it like this, they won't have to. But hopefully they will kind of you know, as their passing game is just out of control, they will use the time in order to get their run game back in line. So how about Kirk Cousins and the Vikings receivers there? Go move on to that game. Cousins, 425 yards, four touchdowns. Adam Thielen, 12 catches, 131 and a touchdown. Diggs, nine catches, 128 and two touchdowns. Not, not too bad. No, I mean, this is what we were expecting from the Vikings side. I, you know, Cousins has always been a solid quarterback. I think he had the most talent he's ever had now. Uh, the big question between you and me, was who is going to be the standout? I thought Thalen would continue to be, you know, the fantasy option. 
preferable and you thought Diggs and I'm not going to lie. Neither of them are disappointing. I would take both of them. <laughs> They're both, um, both great right now. It's incredible. I cannot believe their stat lines. I don't know how you can have two guys that total for over 250 yards and three TDs. It's crazy. Yeah. And the team only put up 29 points. It's not like they're in the forties here and still able to do that. Hey, nice to see Laquan Treadwell get that touchdown. Yeah. You know, he's, this is just just enough to say, hey, don't forget about me. <laughs> and, and Rudolph was fine too, seven for seventy two, solid. Yeah, I mean every single person, even even Cook. I know that he didn't have as many carries as we'd like him to see, but um, you know, ten for thirty eight rushing, but he made it up three catches for fifty two yards. So he's still relevant, even when their passing game is going nuts and Cousins throws nearly fifty times. So I thought that was still good to see. Uh, I still very much believe in Cook. Oh yeah, he'll be fine. I they'll still I'm not worried about him. He had, he left that game, but it looked like it was just maybe cramp issue or something like that. No big deal. He'll be fine. Then say like Green Bay in the same game. Rodgers looked eh, decent for having the injury, only one touchdown, but Adams did well. But it's nice to see Geronimo Allison. We've been hyping him up six for sixty four. It's he's he's relevant. He's there. You know he's gonna keep doing that. I think. He, he definitely outplayed Cobb today. Cobb didn't do too much, which it's going to think go back and forth between those two who has the better game week by week. They're kind of, I don't think there's a sure thing number two there. I think Allison is very close to Cobb right now. I do too. And I, I think the important thing to look at this as well, be, uh, the scariest part would be if one of those rookies was kind of nipping at their heels, if you will, but they haven't done anything in these games. And I know once again, like even Cobb and Allison, uh, you know, Allison, 64 yards, Cobb, 30, six catches, four catches. But Rodgers, I mean, he was good, but he wasn't his usual self. So I think that there's usually more touchdowns to go around. So even on those, you know, efforts out there, I think they will always improve on them. And Minnesota has a very good defense and they still put up 29 against them. So, you know, I, I do not, you know, worry about this. I think Allison is still a unbelievably good value. You can still get him in a lot of leagues. I think you should absolutely do that. Um, so I I really, really thought that this was just another step in the right direction. And even more so, they got Graham involved, which is kind of a first, so to see how they're going to use him. And I do not believe Jamal Williams has secured this job in these two weeks. He didn't have Aaron Jones there. Exactly. And guess what time it is. <laughs> time for that suspension to be up. We, we might be talking about that on tomorrow's waiver episode, possibly. Might, it might get brought up. We'll see. All right. What other standout performances or things you want to talk about from week two? I think we absolutely have to touch on Amari Cooper. I know that that game ended 19 to 20. Denver got it. I I love myself some Case Keenum. I feel very validated in in hyping up their offense, saying it was going to be underrated. Um, But the guy that I was most interested in was Cooper. He had 10 receptions for 116 yards, and they really tried hard to get him the ball. And I thought that was the best thing to see for any Cooper owner. Cause I'm not gonna lie. Last week was deja vu of last year. And that had to have been scary. Yep. And I, I, I didn't know how this would go. I had a feeling they'd come out here and try to get the ball to Cooper, but I wasn't going to rank it. I wasn't going to suggest it until it actually happened. It just, it felt like it was going to be that kind of game. And it was so good. They can, they had to get the ball to Cooper and they found the way to do it. And Shoot, in this same game, I'll say Jared Cook proved to us why we don't overhype Jared Cook after a big game. 4 for 49, that's just what he does after a big game, right? Yeah, and that's not the, you know, it doesn't kill you no, as, it's a, fine. as a tight end. It's fine, but, you know, that's why you don't blow your entire, you know, waiver budget on a tight end like Cook. But Marshawn Lynch is still quite fun to watch play at this time, <laughs> at this point in his career. He's still great. He really is. I was t- texting back and forth with Craig today, and as soon as he was carrying the ball and just carrying people with him, and I was like, "How this guy is the most fun running back ever to watch. Like He is just, he loves the game, and he just, I can't believe how hard the guy runs. I mean, you know what I mean? And 18 rushes for 65 and a touchdown, still a very viable option, even being an older running back in the league. How about the Denver side in this? And Philip Lindsay. Is 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 he the main back now in Denver? Is he? It's weird. I didn't think two games in we'd see Philip Lindsay with two games like this, and then fourteen for one hundred and seven. 
and Freeman only with eight carries for 28 yards and a touchdown. Freeman is, I believe, more likely going to be the goal line back, but they really like Philip Lindsay. I mean, he just gets the job done. I I was really surprised because when I hyped up Lindsay, I really thought that he was going to catch more balls. I don't know if I was alone on that, but he only caught one today and they gave him 14 rushes. I mean, he I mean, he almost doubled Freeman's workload. It it was it's I don't know if that's scary or or if it was just with the game flow, but Lindsay is for real. They're going to use him. Um I don't know what that means for Freeman yet to be completely honest. Not sure. It's I at the I mean Freeman's not going to be the workhorse back now, though. At, the, at this point, we Lindsay's carved out a role, and Freeman will never. At this point, it doesn't seem like there's any way he becomes a workhorse. He's going to be active. He's going to be involved. You can probably still use him as your flex, but Lindsay is probably. I'd rather play Lindsay the way it's looked in two weeks. I, I change my mind's changed quickly on that. I really like watching him play, though. So I'm going to play him over. Over Freeman, I think right now. I don't know. You, would you rank them that way? Uh, close. They're very close, to be honest. And I think the uh, the goal line back of being Freeman is will save him for the time being because I I do think as he did in this game he will get a touchdown every once in a while. So that will kind of buoy him. But um, it won't take a whole lot for for Lindsay to overtake Freeman in at least fantasy. And then I'll say actually one quick thing on the on. Receiving well, Demarius Thomas only five for eighteen, nothing there. Sanders four for ninety six, that's fine. But Jake Butt, I'm interested. I think he's four for forty eight. <laughs> I think that's going to keep increasing. Yep, and uh, he's definitely one of those players. I have. There's a bunch of young guys that kind of, even if they didn't show up on the fantasy, you know, scores, if you will. Uh, I think that there's five names that showed up. That it's just kind of glimpses of what they could be. And I can go into this right after this little segment of Denver and Oakland, but Jake Butt is one of them. I liked him coming out of college, and he had that injury. He comes back, and I think he's establishing himself as the primary you know, tight end to catch balls in this offense. Um, and I think he, he actually could be relevant this year if he continues to progress at the rate he's going. He looked really good out there today. I, I, I think he's getting, especially in the way that how scarce that position is, he could be usable quickly. It's worth worth a shot to watch him. How about move over to a different game? I'm going to go to the Saints game here. Saints, Browns. Browns <laughs> probably would have won if they had a field goal kicker. That was <laughs> terrible. Just yeah. You, well, the, you can say that about the Vikings too. <laughs> true. You, you know, you just know Zane Gonzalez is probably going to be out of a job starting tomorrow, which yeah. So I guess it is what it is. But the Saints side... Michael Thomas has 28 catches in two games. Just ridiculous. Yeah, he, 20, yeah, he's going nuts. Yeah, two touchdowns a day. Only 89 yards, I guess, out of 12 catches. But, hey, whatever, you'll take it. In standard, it's great. In PPR, it's just amazing what he's been doing, all those catches. And I guess would this be considered a disappointing Alvin Kamara game? <laughs> which I love that it, it really is. And I, I love that it is, especially if you're in PPI. I mean, you're still golden, right? He has six catches for 53 yards, 13 rushes, which is, you know, you know, about where he's going to be. And he got 46 yards, but no touchdown, nothing, you know, nothing too crazy, uh, but still a great <laughs> start. So, uh, uh, dude, I love me some Kamara. I, I freaking love this guy. Yeah, and that's the floor right there is what he, that game is. And he got standard-wise 11.9 points because of the two-point conversion. That's about the worst you're going to get. And with Cleveland, eh, there's just, I don't know, they're better as a team, but there's not a lot of people I want to play on their team. Antonio Callaway's interesting. He got the big touchdown catch. So his line looks a little better. He only had three catches, but one, you know, one big touchdown that ended up making it even better than that. Najoku's not really doing anything yet. He's not showing up and Landry's okay, but I don't know if I'm terribly interested in this team right now offensively. I thought they were going to be better than this. I mean, maybe the Saints defense is still good. They had one bad week. I guess we, just, we, I don't, I guess I don't know anything about Cleveland yet. I'll say that. Yeah, I don't, I don't know either. And, and, you know, d- I'm just making up excuses for them. They, you know, they they play really good defense. I'll give them that. The fact that you can slow down the Saints the way they did, and they did have one big play, but I, I feel like they have to open it up more. I, I do wonder as well how much you know 
you know, with Gordon, that whole issue coming in, they're saying they're going to release him on Monday and all that. I wonder how much that actually played into this. Like, it, he could have been game planned into it. They could have been completely blindsided by this. So that could have played a, a part. How about this Cowboys Giants game that just finished up? Giant or Cowboys get the win, but uh, other than man, what Zeke, a, it's Dak ugly. looked okay, at least with the running. But Zeke's good. I mean, who are they throwing the ball to? Uh, they they absolutely I don't they absolutely need a, a a wide receiver. They have no pass game, and it's it's hurting Zeke as well. I mean, luckily he got into the end zone, and uh, Zeke he's just a, a freak. He's amazing. But if this keep if this continues, I would you know seriously worry about uh, you know Zeke's longevity because if you're going to give him the ball twenty times a game, and they know he's getting it, you know, I just I don't know. I, f- I fear for that guy and and his fantasy kind of output. Well. Hearns and Gallup are completely droppable at this point. Both did nothing. I mean, can I just say something about PPR again? I know I did this last week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How is Zeke's five catches for nine yards worth 5.9 points in PPR? How? Like, I mean, is that, that that's worth 5.9? I don't know. It, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm starting to dislike PPR more and more. Even a half point, I, I feel like, um, I don't know. We go into this every time, but I feel like they were doing it in order to make up for because running backs were running wild with it. But it turned into such a throwing league that I don't understand where that is going now. It, you know, it I'm actually just lopsides it towards the wide receiver I'm, anymore. I'm going against the grain with that. I know everyone's going PPR. That's the way to go. Uh, but still, I just I'd like somebody to explain that to me. I don't know. Something. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan. So how about the Giants and Barkley? 14 catches. Wow, 14 catches for 80 yards. That's a big <laughs> game. So he had a lot of points in PBR. I know, especially 14 for 80. I mean, yeah. oh my gosh, dude. Like, ugh, Manning is just uh, 279 and one. He didn't throw an interception, but what? where are they, all of them going? I mean, it's, you're just dumping it off entirely. I mean, Beckham, you have Beckham. You got 454, four for 51, but you only score 13 points. Like, where... What are you trying to do on this offense? I just I don't know where they're going with this. It makes me worry. I know Beckham will get his, Barkley will get his as well. They're both really really good, but New York, I just ugh, their offense just terrible right now. I think it's that offensive line is just too terrible. They can't do anything. Eli doesn't have time. He has to dump it off. But this is where I okay. This is not where I wish I played in PPR league. I have Barkley on in one of in our main league, and I got ten point eight today from Barkley. Man, I would have had twenty four point eight there. <laughs> Completes PBR. <laughs> Look at the difference there. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I mean, in PPR, he, he still had a great game. And that's what Barkley's going to do all year. He's going to be – so this is like when he only runs for 28 yards, he's still going to catch all these balls. He's going to get at least double-digit points for you and any kind of in standard as well. So it's very usable. But that, if that line doesn't improve, it's going to be tough for Eli to f- even get time to throw the ball that Odell. They're going to have to do more of those quick slants. Kind of thing that you know, and that usually work really well with Beckham. That they just didn't do much tonight. They did one early, but you need to get those quick slants, get back on the ball, and try to go because there's no time for Eli right now. Just there isn't, and it's going to get be a long year if that's the case. But they did come back a little bit there, and finally the offense was moving a little bit. But it was more of the two minute offense where everyone seems to be able to run that. Defenses don't nearly try as hard. But how about Patriots Jaguars today? Uh, Chris Hogan there, two two touchdowns. Yeah, uh, he was Only really really. Wor- I know he was really really worrying me. Uh, I I don't. I think this is kind of just a New England thing though. They're you know it's kind of like they're retooling. They're figuring out. Jaguars are a very good team. They have an excellent defense, so I wouldn't read too much into this. Uh, you know, if if people don't freak out and jump off like the Brady bandwagon or anything, they'll be fine. So uh, you know, I think it's just one more game for them. I am jumping off the Rex Burkhead bandwagon, though. I think oh yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that's done. I mean, he he got he moved up the ranks a little bit before the season started, and I liked him last year. But so far in two games, I mean, it doesn't even matter how they they could change this up, and he could have big games. It's so you can't trust it whatsoever, and we know this. Patriots running backs, how can you trust it? So I mean, right. James White's uh, probably the best option. Yeah, because he ha- he's going to be able to catch the ball a lot, and they will need that. Um, there's no doubt about it. He is 
the favorite target at the moment. Seven catches for 73 yards. That's very good for a running back. My question to you is, this is the first time we've really gotten to watch Michelle play. What are your initial thoughts about him? Well, I like the fact that they gave him 10 carries right away. It, it, I mean, it's hard for me to read into this playing against Jacksonville and how good they are, but it's encouraging, I think, just the fact that he got the 10 carries and he, he shows some signs that he could do something. I, it's hard. It really is hard, though, to, I think, judge when you go against this defense. I want to see more from him, but I'm just encouraged at least by the fact that he got the 10, he got the 10 rushes. He had the one catch. So he right away became the leading rusher on the team. So it's, it's encouraging. It is. I, I don't know what that. I think it makes it a little more clear. I assume going forward that uh, Michelle will be the primary rushing back. I mean, if this continues, I think they'll you know they'll jumble it up like, as they always do. But it looks like Michelle will take that role. White will take the receiving role, um, and then every once in a while they'll throw in Burkhead or flip flop in order to switch it up. But um, I think it's becoming a little more stable with what we're seeing. The the really impressive thing that the Jaguars did do today is they shut down Gronk. They did. And so only two catches for 15 yards. Uh, that is so unlike him. Yeah, not worried, though, but still. it's Once in a while, that seems to happen. And I, don't know, I think Jacksonville's just too good. They really are. Their defense is too good. And on the other side of the ball, I, I think everyone is, saw the catch. Keelan Cole goes up with one hand. It was freaking amazing. But, and that, and immediately after that, they go into him in the corner of the end zone. He catches it. At that point, because I, the whole time I was kind of wondering who is going to kind of, you know, rise to the top, who is going to be the primary wide receiver. And Keelan Cole was already kind of taking it, but I think that kind of cemented it. Showing off those kind of skills and the fact that they went to him early and often. And then, you know, the other guys did well, but it was um, definitely, you know, near the end of the game. They're cementing it and, you know, that guy, they were running wide open. Um, so I don't know. Do you do you kind of feel the way I do? Is Keelan Cole is that number one there and he is for real? I think so. I He, you know, when you combine what he did today and you look at what he did towards the end of last season, he really is that guy, I believe now, with DD being the number two behind him. And I think that's just, I think that's pretty clear now. Keelan Cole is good and he can definitely be a third receiver in your lineup. I think if this is the case and this is Bortles doing his four touchdown thing, 377 yards. We always just, we just underrate this guy and we just disregard him. But then he does this again, makes me rethink things. I still don't <laughs> think he's a great quarterback, but. And that's why you can't get too high on any one player, especially quarterback, because you're seeing right now that they're having some ridiculous games, and Bortles is a perfect example of that. He will end up in probably the top 15 or so, but he is going to be up and down all year, and this is going to be one of the highlights, because as soon as Fournette comes back, it's definitely his offense. Um, so, you know, don't get too high on Bortles. It's wonderful to see him do well, but, uh, you know, he's more than likely not going to go back to that throwing four touchdowns. I'm going to hit this another game real quick. I'm not going to talk about it for much more than like 20 seconds because it was there's nothing to talk about about Colts Redskins. Luck eh, didn't do not a great game, but you know could be worse. I don't want anything to do with the running backs there. It looks like it's just going to be split between Wilkins, Mack, and Hines. Why I I can't use any of them. I don't know if you think anything different, but I I'm, I'm staying away completely. Yeah, I mean, if you need one. I mean, to be honest, Wilkins looked better than Mac, but you know that's that's Stay more away. of a yeah, it's more of a desperation thing because running back is hard to come by. But I don't expect too much out of anyone. Hilton looks good, no surprise. He's in your lineup every week. Eric Ebron catches a touchdown, but only has three for twenty six, so he's not that good. I mean, let's be honest, it's Luck and Hilton. That, that, those are the two players you should know on this team. Everyone else is yeah, yeah. Yep. Washington, Alex Smith. Solid, decent, no touchdowns though. <laughs> Peterson only eleven for twenty. He's gonna have games like this. He's gonna have better games. He's just I think you still play him until he has like three of these in a row. Yeah, I, I didn't expect him to have this type of game against Indianapolis. No, me so either. that is that's very disappointing for me. I I really thought he was back and then, you know, you practically lay an lay an egg against this team. It shouldn't happen. It really no. shouldn't. So that does bother me. Um it, it definitely hurts my confidence in Peterson. Chris Thompson looks good for 
PPR purposes, really. But even standard as a flex type option, he's I think he's going to continue to do this. Jordan Reed, solid outing, you know. I guess this is the was he he stayed healthy. Yeah, that's that's a win. I mean, six for fifty five. That's that's a fine day for a tight end. It's not what you want to read, but at the same time, when they don't score a touchdown, it's really all you can ask for. And then the receivers not really interested in them anymore. Crowder's disappointing me. I I hoped he'd be better than this with Alex Smith, but he's not. Maybe it'll change. Yeah, this is more what I thought that the uh, Washington team was going to do this year. Um, maybe they'll bounce back because the first week they looked much better than they did today. How about the Chargers? They Gordon got three touchdowns relatively early. Two of them receiving the ball. Only had nine for twenty-eight carries. You know, rushing the ball there, but didn't really need to do much. So they gave the ball to Austin Eckler a little bit there, and he had eleven for seventy-seven. He's <laughs> he's very usable. I- I know. I, I called this one too. <laughs> I was, you know, because I thought they were going to beat the crap out of the Bills. And why would you use Gordon after halftime? Uh, I thought, honestly, I thought Eckler was going to get a few more carries than just 11 because I thought they'd be running out the clock. But um, for the limited amount he got, 11, he really made the most of that. And he looks good. He is going to be playable most weeks, I think. Um, he obviously would be more of a flex guy and he has less of an opportunity to get into the end zone. But between getting, you know, say eight rushes and then, uh, you know, a handful of passes thrown his way, he's definitely carved out a, a nice little niche for himself. Yes, and I don't think it's going to go away. He's proved himself. He's a very usable option. It, but the nice thing with Gordon, though, too, is Gordon doesn't even need much, many touches anymore or even many yards because he scores touchdowns. He does, and it hasn't slowed down. He's been doing it for the past, you know, two years now. Keenan Allen just had a decent game, but they didn't need to do much. And Mike Williams caught a touchdown, but didn't do much other than that. But it's hard to read into this game. So, you know, I'd like to see some more from him. But then, as a Buffalo, McCoy went out with an injury there at one point. I don't know what his status is going to be. He still shows flashes that he's really a good player because he is. It's just he's playing on a terrible offense. So, what can you really do with it? I mean, he had, what, 68 total yards? And I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, if they could, if they, uh, if the Bills had any sense, they would try to shop him. I don't know <laughs> what his value would be, but the Bills are not going to do him any any use. I mean, he's he's an older back. He's not going to help them out too much. He's still a very good back, and Bills are terrible. I mean, they are really going to struggle to win even a couple games this week year. So, I, I'm I'm pulling for McCoy, but I I feel I have him on some of my uh, one of my teams as well, and I'm feeling really you know uneasy about even putting him in my starting lineup because he's just gonna get just crushed behind this team. Then the thing about crushing people is the Rams crush the Cardinals, thirty four nothing. God, another team that ugh. Cardinals are bad. I man, Sam Bradford. I expect I thought he was gonna be better than this. I didn't mean necessarily think he's going to be great, but I thought he's going to be just steady. They need to put Josh Rosen in now. I know. His stat line is so bad. Um, 17 for 27, 90 yards and an interception. I know that the Rams are a good defense, but come on. That is that is just pitiful. That is giving up. And this is, I mean, David Johnson is, they need to throw him the ball. That's why he, when he was so good is when he was getting, he was getting receptions. And I thought, like Sam Bradford, he's a guy who could get the ball to him. But no, I mean, they need to put Josh Rosen in. I'm done with Bradford already. It's They need to switch something up now. This is bad. If Absolutely. you're a David Johnson owner, I'd be I'd be worried. Uh, well, that is my question. What What is your thought? Like, what are you thinking right now? Are you, are you contemplating a trade? Only – see, I would only if I could get some – I'd have to get a top a running back one in return, which I don't think you're going to get after a guy only puts up, you know, 5.1 points in standard. So I think you just hold and you hope the offense changes around because Johnson's talented enough that he's he gets the opportunities. I think I think that's your only. I don't know. Yeah, no, I'm I'm with you. I I, I don't. I'm I'm afraid to get rid of him definitely because I think you're trade or you'd be trading at a very low value at the moment. And I think Johnson is way too talented. I think they will figure out a way to get the ball in his hands more than 14 times. And I think that is going to start probably. I think maybe Bradford will get one more week. But I think Rosen will eventually take take hold. 
And I think that they'll change things around a little bit. So I would hold fast. I would keep him on your team. Don't freak out too much. He's too good to uh, not bust out. Well, and then the Rams are good. Gurley's yard per carry isn't good, but he scored three touchdowns, so he's good, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, don't, <laughs> I heard three touchdowns, and I don't care about anything else. He's going to get touchdowns. He doesn't. He's going to be. He's going to be great. And Brandon Cooks is showing why we hyped him up so much, and we were so much higher than him on him than I think than most people. It, it feels really good on this one because right? he got so much hate, and oh, I could not figure it out. Me either. He's a very good wide receiver, and it just shows seven catches for 159 yards didn't get in the end zone but 159 yards yeah. it's crazy i thought we were it felt like we were out in an island on him but we were just we, we were i was picking him in every time every league we had every time i was getting brandon cooks because he was there and he was the best by far the best the most potential and no one seemed to want him but he's the best receiver they have and <laughs> jared goff knows that already i I think it's going to continue. I don't even think he's going to be a boomer bust guy. No, I, I think, and I do. I think touchdowns will be, uh, you know, uh, not a consistent thing. But I think with Goff developing the way he is, I mean, he he didn't throw a lot of touchdowns, but he still was a very solid game. Obviously, the Cardinals didn't score at all, so obviously they could have just, you know, ran the ball the entire game, and he still went three hundred and fifty yards and touchdown and interception. Um, They'll be fine. I think uh, he cooks definitely. And I'm even kind of coming around on maybe a, a Woods or Cup. I don't like to play them a lot. But I think in a PPR, you definitely can. How about like the, the Dolphins-Jets game? That's the most exciting game of the day. Dolphins win, but not a lot I'm interested in here. The Jets are going to be, they're going to struggle a bit. Darnold's going to have, he's going to have be good at times. He's going to be bad at times. Crowell, 12 or 35. It's about what I expect. He's gonna do. He's gonna have some big games, and he's gonna have some games like this. He's a tough guy to trust. But Powell is definitely getting a lot of the receptions, getting some receiving yards, which is keeping him, you know, usable because he's not doing much on the ground. Still, don't trust it. I think the only guy you trust here is Anunua. Has already become tr- like a guy you can trust in your lineup. Yeah, I really like Anunua. Uh, I think he's legit. I'm glad he's back from injury and he's. He's already established himself as like, you know, Darnold's favorite receiver. And I think that goes a long way for a, a rookie. And then with the Dolphins, Drake, he's going to continue to be solid. He'll be, a, he's a startable guy. I don't think he's going to be, you know, spectacular, but he's startable as a running back too, probably even definitely in your flex. He's fine. Receiving wise. I mean, Kenny Stills got a lot of hype in this past week. And then he showed why it's still Kenny Stills. And we, I mean, us personally are never terribly high on Kenny Stills. It's not even the talent. It's just this is what I've seen too many of these two for 17s. I know. And it was just last week, too, we were admitting that we're probably undervaluing him. And then he does this. And I feel like I can't be vindicated. I can't fit saying I'm right. I'm just stuck in the middle now because I gave you a little bit of love, Stills, and you spit in my face. And of this Carolina-Atlanta game. Atlanta wins. I don't think we learned much at all in this game because we just learned what we knew is when Tevin Coleman plays, he's really good. He's, you know, 16 for 107. Julio, it is five for 64. Eh, that's that's the worst he's going to be. Ridley, nice to see Calvin Ridley did something. Yeah, and I think those are the two big ones, right? I mean, we're looking at the rookies, and both of them actually did something finally. And DJ Moore had what, only one catch. Only one, but... but- 51 yards, took it to the house. He, hopefully, they'll get him involved more. Um, it, it was good to see. I'm not ready to say he's going to jump up there or anything, but um, him and Ridley finally did something. Both uh, both caught a touchdown. They did enough where they're staying on the end of your bench. You know, that's... Exactly. Kind of. Yeah, exactly. I, you're going to hold on <laughs> for a few more weeks and see what they are. Then McCaffrey, he's going to be great because he can catch the ball. 14 catches, yeah. 102 yards. And that's why he was so high in PPR. We, you know, he caught a ton last year, you know, 80 catches or so. Obviously, he's well on his way doing that already. 14 catches today, 102 yards. That's, I mean, it's crazy. What is up with all of these running backs having double digit catches today? Right. It's just, I, that's, I feel like that's the way things are going now. It is. And then, well, Cam Newton, just very solid game. Again, it's just another good Cam Newton game. That's what he does. How about this Houston, Tennessee? Tennessee wins. Watson turned it into a decent fantasy game, pretty decent fantasy game, but I don't know. I'm just, this is one of the reasons I wasn't as high on Watson just because 
I don't necessarily think it looked great, but he does turn it into fantasy points at the end of the day. Yeah, I'm 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 still I'm still holding out faith that he is going to be the guy I want him to be. I think uh and the big one too, I mean it goes along with why I think he's gonna do better, is because when Fuller's in there, he is a much better quarterback. And Fuller, were you impressed by him today? Because I know usually you're kind of he's a banger bust, but if you look at his receptions, his yardage and what he did, he was not his his old self where he was a one trick pony. He he was a true wide receiver today. He he was good. He was good today. I I might be wrong on him, but he's going to prove. He, hey, if he proves me wrong, he proves me wrong. That's fine. He looked good. I have to see more from him yet, but I was impressed with today's output. That's for sure. Yeah, I mean, eight catches is so. I mean, that definitely would have been unusual last year. But eight catches for 113 yards and a touchdown. You know, it wasn't just one big streak. Um, I was I was really impressed. And then. Tennessee side, I don't think we learned anything because Mariota wasn't out there. It's Henry and Lewis split the carries. Corey Davis, five for 55. And that's about it. <laughs> Nothing there. Yeah, Tennessee is just, they have an ugly offense right now. Uh, they're another one that I'm kind of stepping away from. I just don't see a whole lot of value in, in too many of their guys. So you'll be able to play them, you know, stream them, if you will. But uh, I feel really bad because I think there's a lot of talent here. They just haven't been able to put it together. All right, well, I think the only game we haven't talked about is the Lions and 49ers. And Niners win. Lions almost made their fourth quarter comeback like they've been known to do. Couldn't quite do it. They, I don't know. Stafford bounced back. He was he was better. I think they do need to get the ball to carry on Johnson more. Yeah, he started looking pretty good at the end there when they were giving it to him. So uh, that, that made me feel a little bit better. Only eight rushes. I mean, him and Blount both had eight rushes, so they split. But I'm 43 and 38, so they're very comparable. Kenny Galladay looks really good. He really does. He's a. Uh, I think that they're going to use him more and more. And um, the only reason I don't like that is because I, I worry about what that's going to do to like, especially Jones, because I think that is kind of his role being the touchdown guy. So I worry about that. I think Tate will be fine. He'll catch a lot of balls and get you know a good amount of yardage. But um, I don't know. I say all three of them were playable. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, where where does Galladay kind of rank in your in your mind right now? Is he um is he a flex guy or is he still on your bench kind of waiting I, to get he's in? He's a flex guy for me. I think he's I think this is legit. I think he is this good. I'm I'm buying in. Maybe this is my Lions fan bias, even though I hate the Lions now because they're terrible. <laughs> but I'm buying in completely. I think he I think he might be the best receiver on this team. Yeah, he looks like he has some big playability, and definitely anytime they try to stretch the field, it looks like Stafford is, uh, you know, he has a little bit of confidence throwing it up to him. So uh, hopefully that'll turn into pay dirt a little more going down the road. Um, it didn't work out too well today, obviously, but he did have one big play at least. How good is Matt Breda? Yeah, go figure. I mean, I I'll be the first one to say it looks like I backed the wrong horse coming out of the gate. Um, Morris does get a few more touches. But Breda is the the big play guy. You know, you give him 10 touches and eventually he will make something happen. So, you know, I, I think he's definitely the back to have right now. I'm happy I got Breda in those two leagues over Morris. You got Morris, I got Breda. And it, it wasn't even necessarily. I did put Morris ahead of him, though, too, I think. Just worked out. But he did this on my bench this week. So he, I don't know if I trust playing him yet, though. Right. And this is, do you have any other thoughts about this? The only thing that jumps out to me is Kittle. Yeah. I was going to say I, Kittle disappointed all of us that yeah, we, we gave him love uh, last year or last year, last week as well. And I thought he was going to be Garoppolo's go-to guy. Only two catches really, um, especially when they put up 30 points. I, I'm, I'm really bummed about that. Me too. I think he'll be fine though. I think it'll improve. We'll see. Not, I'm not off the bandwagon. I still think Kittle's a top 10 guy, top 10 tight end. So I'm going to believe in that. We'll see what happens next week, I guess. But eh, I think that's pretty much it. I think we end up covering all the games this week. So, yeah, you- uh, the only I was going to say the uh, two other guys, we hit DJ Moore, Ridley, Jake, Butt, but um, the other two guys that we didn't really talk about that are the rookies. Sutton for Denver had a crazy good catch that was ruled out of bounds, by the way. And I, I truly think that he is a guy that you can look to that might actually be playable come the second half of the season. Because he, he looks like he is priming up to be the real deal. 
And I think Case Keenum, that offense is doing real good. Um, obviously, Emmanuel Sanders and you know Thomas are going to be fine. Uh, but I, I really liked what I saw out of him. And then Washington also scored a touchdown. I think he's less likely to be usable later on. But um, if uh, who knows, if someone goes down, Washington will be a, a very cheap guy to grab. Yeah, just keep uh, just keep an eye out for those guys. And yeah, injury, what, they're both the number threes. If there's an injury at all ahead of them, they're going to step in and probably do something. So just yeah. watch watch those guys. So there. I was going to say, the last thing I will say, I will keep extending this episode, but <laughs> as, as, we, as we keep figuring out a little more and more about people, um, and I know you didn't base a whole lot about matchups this week, but um, as we're kind of becoming a little more clear, are there certain teams that you're much more likely to start players against? I feel like there's a few teams that their defense looks just like they can't stop anyone at the moment. I mean, uh, more comes to mind. I was going to say Bills, Lions, and Arizona look freaking true. terrible. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm starting anybody against yeah, – Arizona doesn't look good at all. Bills, this is going to be – it's going to be bad all year. You're going to play everybody against the Bills all the time. And yeah, the Lions defense doesn't feel like they can stop anybody either. Like, just, yeah. you know, they can't do it. And, and I mean, I think, I think Pittsburgh is going to be in a couple more shootouts this year too. They don't have a very good defense right now, and they have a great offense, though, so they're going to be in some shootouts. So you might – these Pittsburgh games are going to be games that you might, you know, want to start some guys in, too. Yeah, and I think that's what's fun about seeing week two. I think it's becoming much more clear, and, you know, we're not going off of one week, so I think it'll be fun to see the the overcorrection now. <laughs> Everyone freaked out and kind of jumped off bandwagons, and now everyone's going to jump back on and even more so. And So it should be fun, and I think waivers – there's still a lot of good guys out there, which we will get to. Yep, we will. We'll talk about that tomorrow. We got some good waiver pickups yet, I think, for you. So we'll do that tomorrow. We'll talk to you guys then. 